Good morning, children. In this class, we will be discussing on the insecticides. That is the various types of insecticides and the vector resistance or the resistance developed by the pests against it or the insect against it. The first insecticide which was developed somewhere in 19th century in 1874 is the DDT. That is very commonly used insecticide all over the world and somewhere in 1940 uh, Dr. David Muller marketed or commercialized this DDT insecticides again for spraying against mosquitoes. Thereafter, DDT was used extensively all over the world for control of malaria and mosquito borne other diseases and therefore, DDT became very famous. But later on somewhere in the later part of 20th century around 1970-78 onwards, DDT was found in the biological system in all kinds of small living beings in the plants in the human body and so DDT was banned. This is a short history about the insecticides and thereafter many insecticides were developed to kill the insects and thereby to prevent certain diseases. Insecticides are organic and inorganic chemicals that kill the insects whereas pesticides is a general term that includes fungicide means it can kill the fungus, rodenticides means it can kill the rodent or the rats, herbicides that it can kill the algae and other kinds of unwanted plant and chemicals which can kill the pests. The importance of insecticides is that it controlled many epidemics in the past, especially the plague and the malaria epidemics. It eliminated many diseases of the public health challenge. Malaria, plague, typhus fever were controlled by simple simply by spraying of insecticides. At present the dengue is a challenge and it is also being tackled by help of the spraying of chemical insecticides mainly the delta methrin. <coughs> With the use of the pesticides and the insecticides it made the area suitable for human habitations and also caused the green revolutions and much more production of the food and the food, food articles. It helped in tourism and also in traveling and also reduced common enteric infections by killing certain vectors like mainly the house flies which carry the germs of many diseases like the typhoid fever, gastroenteritis and many more. So these are the importance of the insecticides. This sequence shows the common classification of insecticide. There are three kinds, contact poison, stomach poison and the fumigants. Contact poison has got pyrethrum, DDT, HCH and dieldrin. Contact poison means as soon as this insects come in contact with this particular insecticides, they will die. So this contact can happen either through some objects where the insecticide spray has been taken and the remnants of the insecticide is present or it can be that the pyrethrum sprayed in the pyrethrum aerosol sprayed in the space and the insect coming in contact with the droplets of pyrethrum in the space and getting killed. There are stomach poisons like Paris green and sodium fluoride. Paris green and sodium fluoride also causes death of the insect if it had taken by chance it had gone into the stomach of the uh, insect. And there are fumigants that is the gases like hydrogen cyanide, methyl bromide, sulfur bromide and carbon disulfide. These are mainly used for rodenticides or to kill the rats. The conventional classification includes that there are natural and the synthetic variants. In the natural variant there is 
certain plant products like the <coughs> pyrethrum and the <coughs> mainly the pyrethrum and also there is the mineral oils and in the synthetic there is organic and inorganic. In the organic group you have the organochlorine compounds and then there is organophosphorus compounds and there are carbamate group of compounds and also there are certain uh, other kinds of insecticides. The further classification that is the chemical classification in the organochlorine group you have the DDT and the HCH and the dieldrin. DDT, HCH and dieldrin they are very commonly used insecticides at present. Then there are organophosphorus compounds like the malathion, fenthion and abate. In the carbamate group there is a propoxyl and carbaryl insecticide. In the natural group there is pyrethrum and as a direct directing and in the synthetic pyrethroids there is the parmethrin or delta methrin is also a synthetic pyrethroid. We now talk about the DDT, DDT is dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, chemically it is dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, it is very common insecticides and used since ages. It is a white powder having a typical smell and it is a contact poison and act on the nervous system to kill the insect. It takes several hours to kill. The effect of sprayed DDT lasts quite a long. DDT is water soluble and it can be sprayed onto the surface and it lasts till 18 months. So, that surface which is sprayed with the DDT will be able to transmit DDT particles to the insect for 18 months and that insect which absorbs the DDT through its cuticle may die during this 18 months time. So, that is why spray of DDT is known as the long residual spray. The dose is 100 to 200 milligram per square feet or 1 gallon of 5 percent solution can be sprayed over 1000 square feet area and that helps in killing the insect vector. It absorbs to the insect body through the cuticle of the insect and it kills lice, ticks, bugs, fleas, mosquitoes and flies. That is a variety of insect which is susceptible to DDT. However, it has been banned now because of found to be a biological pollutant and traces of DDT found in the animate and inanimate objects and therefore, it is banned. In India, it has been used extensively in national malaria control program and eradication program. However, at present it has been replaced by malathion because of its residual action and as well as because of its you know kind of biological contaminant action. We talk about the benzene hexachloride or BHC. This is also known as the HCH or hexachlorocyclohexane. Benzene hexachloride or BHC and HCH are they are the same. They are brown white powder irritant to the eyes and the nose and it contains around 13 to 16 percent of the strength in the powder. 99 percent isomer is known as the linden. Linden is more active and more toxic than BHC. It is a strong contact poison and the residual action however is shorter not as long as 18 months that we saw in DDT, it is around 30 to 45 days. The dose is 25 to 50 milligram per square feet and the residual action can give rise to the death of a insect by 3 months or so. Next we come to the organophosphorus compound that is the malathion. It is very commonly used insecticides at present for national malaria eradication and the control program or even for the other vector borne programs. However, the areas infested with the dengue are subjected to delta methrin spray. It is a yellow clear liquid brown, uh, it is a yellow clear brown liquid and it is least toxic of most of the organophosphorus group of compounds. However, human toxicity is quite common by this malathion. 
in case a man gets poisoned with the malathion because of intentional or non-intentional taking or ingestion of the malathion liquid, he has to be treated by atropine and a PAM, that is pralidoxime. This will this toxicity classes will be taken for all of you later. The dose of this particular insecticide, this 10 percent solution, spread sufficiently to wet the surface and it gives around 100 to 200 milligram per square feet. The current, it is the current alternative to DDT. It can be even ultra low volume spray that is ULV spray or fog can be generated with the help of this <coughs> malathion and that can also help in killing or eliminating mosquito in epidemic control of malaria, dengue and the dengue hemorrhagic fever and Japanese encephalitis. So, malathion is at present the most important insecticide chemical which is available to kill the presently prevalent vectors in the country. Now, we talk about the abet. It is also an organophosphorus compound. It is basically known as temiphos. It is a brown viscous liquid and it is a contact poison for mosquito larvae. Abet is to be sprayed in the water, sprinkled into the water. So, it kills the mosquito larvae. Abet does not kill the mosquito, adult mosquito. This is also least toxic and it is a very good larvicide. It can be used in the domestic whales to kill the larvae. The dose is generally 1 ppm. Next group of the compound in the organophosphorus variety is the diazinin. Diazinin is a uh, volatile contact poison and it is used also as a fumigant. It is effective against the resistant kind of vectors. Those vectors which show resistance against malathion can be sprayed, uh, can be kind of subjected to the diazinin to kill those resistant vectors. The dose is 60 to 100 milligram per square feet, effective against mosquito and flies and it is more toxic and more active than the malathion. Now, we come to the very commonly marketable group of compound called fentian. It is available in the market as Betex. It is a brown liquid with garlic smell and 20 to 40 percent water soluble powder is also available. The dose is 100 milligram per square feet. It is a very good larvicide as well as adulticide. It can kill the adults also. It is also available as Betex granules which kill the, which can be sprinkled over the water to kill the larvae. It is effective against Culex larvae at 1 ppm concentration. Fentian is also a very commonly used insecticides. Next one is dichlorovas or DDVP. Dichlorodivinyl phosphate, it is the DDVP. It is a volatile liquid and gives very uh, uh, fumigant uh, action. It disinfects the aircrafts, ships and similar envoyages. It is used for disinfection of the ships or the kind of aircrafts which are coming from uh, say for example, yellow fever infested area like uh, Africa, Middle Africa and Eastern African countries. So, those ships and uh, aircrafts can be disinfected with the help of this dichlorovar spraying. It is also available as wax bricks used to control the Aedes mosquitoes in the voyages. Aedes mosquito is known to cause the transmission of yellow fever in the African countries, mostly in the middle and the central African countries. So, all the voyages coming or going out of the African countries, they carry these dichlorovas bricks as well as dichlorovas liquid for spraying to kill any mosquito being tra transported through the aircraft. Now, we come to the pyrethrum. This is a naturally occurring insecticides. It is from a vegetable or a kind of a plant known as Crescentemum cinerarifolium. 
It is a kind of a flower, chrysanthemum flower. It is available as a liquid from 0.1 percent solution. Effective space spray kills the mosquito instantly. The dose is half to one ounce of 0.1 percent solution for 1000 square feet area, cubic feet area. For space spray to be effective, the doors and the windows to be kept closed for half an hour. There is no residual effect of pyrethrum. It is a direct contact poison and the combination of 1.6 percent pyrethrum solution along with 3 percent DDT in the dose of 10 gram per thousand cubic feet is also used for aircraft disinfection. So, that means this particular combination of 1.6 percent pyrethrum and 3 percent of DDT can kill the EDC gypsy, which is the vector of the yellow fever from Africa. There are certain synthetic pyrethri pyrethrins also available and these are 10 times more effective than the natural pyrethrum like the examples are delta methrin, parmethrin, tetramethrin, risethrin. They are more toxic and their tolerance has not been reported by the vector. They are mostly contact poisons, however, the prohibited by the cost. It, they are quite costly insecticides. Then you come to the age old insecticide that is known as the Paris green, which is actually a copper aceto arsenide. These are green crystalline soluble in ammonia and acids. These are stomach poison and because of the presence of arsenic, it kills the insect. The good quality chemical will have 50 percent arsenic and it is toxic to even animals and humans also. It is very old insecticide. During 1940s, it was used in Brazil and even in 1944 used in Egypt to control malaria epidemics. However, this Paris green is not much in use at present. Then there is delta methrin. Delta methrin is a synthetic pyrethroid as I already told in my previous slides. It is available in 2.5 percent water soluble preparations. Delta methrin is very useful for prevention of uh, for killing the edis mosquito and for prevention of dengue, dem, dengue hemorrhagic fever and the chikungunya in our country. It is very effective for edis mosquito the tolerance has not been reported and it is used for bed net impregnations. For one mosquito net for a single person, it is to be dipped into the uh, kind of 11 milli milliliter of delta methrin solution in a half a bucket of water and the mosquito net has to be dipped into that solution and thereafter it is to be hung in the shed and the airy place for drying up. So, that is the basic process of bed net impregnation and that can help the reducing the edis mosquito in the community. It can be also used as the shoulder patches and the knee patches. The patch of cloth which can be attached onto the shoulder, knees and the elbows can be dipped in the delta methrin solutions and can be put onto the, these patches can be put onto the shoulder, knees or the elbows and when the mosquito comes in contact, when the mosquito comes in contact, uh, then the it uh, gets in contact with this delta methrin and dies. It is also used as ultra low volume space spray and it is a costly insecticides. Now, we talk about the vector resistance or the insecticide resistance or the resistance developed by the vector against the commonly used insecticides. This is an ability in a strain of insect to tolerate the doses of the insecticides which would otherwise prove lethal to the majority of the normal members of the same species. This resistance has grown among the insects due to widespread use of the insecticides all over the world. It is a global problem now and approximately 134 number of insects are found to be resistant or tolerant to the commonly used insecticides. It is a side effect of use of agricultural pesticides and insecticides. 
the toxic agent is generally metabolized within the system of the insect and the genetic with the help of the uh, genetic technique this technique is transmitted to the next progeny so that they are, they also become tolerant or resistant to that particular insecticide there are three types of insecticide now among the organochlorine insecticide resistance the, there is a ddt resistance hch resistance and the cross resistance for insects with in, insecticidal resistance against both groups only choice remains to spray with the organophosphorus group of compounds resistance has been reported even for the organophosphorus group op group insecticides are very costly and if the insects they develop resistance against the op group then there is no other way to resort to other kind of techniques integrated vector control needs to be used in such kind of cases and newer insecticides and newer techniques are being searched for control of the resistant vectors how do we manage the insecticide resistance rotation of effective insecticides with different modes of action can resolve the insecticide resistance rotation also reduces the risk of developing tolerance by the particular vector avoid consecutive use of the products belonging to the same group plan for contingencies in case the extra applications are required sometimes if we have planned for two applications during the transmission season we may have to increase it by 3 to overcome the resistance in certain group of the insects evaluate current insecticide resistance situation in the area and avoid using insecticides those who have already developed resistance promote natural predators there are so many natural predators certain kind of fishes the kind of frogs and other kind of uh um, small animals which uh, feed on to the larva or the mosquito so promote this natural predators and that will reduce the insect load consider use of insect resistant biological agents and follow correct application timings dosage volume and the concentration of the insecticides to overcome the insecticidal resistance this is the overall management of insecticide resistance there are certain newer techniques one is that uh, there is a sterile insect technique in this the males made to sterile by exposure to gamma rays and when these males they met the wild females the females uh, although they, they they will not have any kind of offspring because these males are sterile even the wild female mosquitoes met released by engineered sterile male progeny will inherit a lethal gene and ultimately die then there is a vector population replacement technique in which the it develop the modified strain of the vector that's unable to transmit the pathogen this process is known as introgress that is the refractoriness of the gene or the genetic system that cannot carry the pathogen at all so a genetic drive or the gene driver is needed in a environment or a gene driver is formed in the environment to promote this kind of replacement technique there is another program to overcome this insecticide resistance this is known as integrated insect management technique here we promote the biological control with the help of certain parasite predators and pathogens especially like there are fishes like gambusia fish there are tadpoles there are other kind of predators which eat onto the mosquito larva and reduce the population there are certain cultural controls like by modifying the existing practices such as watering fertilizing animal husbandry and water storage we can reduce the larval breeding also there is a mechanical and physical control by elimination of the breeding and the resting places of the mosquitoes and last but not the least is the chemical that is the insecticide control which also can be used so in integrated insect management technique all the four techniques are used side by side to have a overall comprehensive 
control over the insecticide population in the community. Finally, to conclude, widespread use of the synth synthetic insecticides gave rise to the serious problems of insecticide resistance all over the world. Problem of insecticide resistance is growing in magnitude and it is of no doubt diminishing the choice of the effective insecticides. Frequent change in insecticides involves increase in the cost and expenditure. Insecticides be used therefore judiciously in an insecticide integrated management program as to preserve the cost effectiveness and maintain the susceptible vectors in the nature. With this I end here today. Thank you very much and thank you once again.